Seven. Next fighting. question. And fighting. Next question. And fighting. Who wins? Next question, bro. Who wins? What? Fighting. You know what I'm talking about. In the bar. Stop. Stop it for smuggling with this pillow. You might. Bro, burn you for 3K, you hot, and watch your mouth, gang. Don't take it somewhere else. Show your face. Show your face, please. With sugar on top. Hey, what's up, y'all? Y'all know my slogan. I don't know it all, but I know what I've been through. Now, before we get into this video, please make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore. We're able to be a little more explicit, a little more uncensored, and share content freely without running the risk of having our channel terminated. So, once again, Make sure you head on down to Instagram and follow us on our official Instagram page at hookah anonymous underscore. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers. So if you like this video, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content. Now let's get into what you guys came here to see. Now, right now, OT7 Kwani has become a household name when it comes to Philly for the music he's put out or lack thereof. Because if you know anything about Kwani, then you know he's known for being what they called a snippet demon. Which is a label he got um, after he's been known for instead of dropping music and giving his fans something, he put snippets out on social media, which is then uploaded to YouTube, leaving his fans to listen to put together unreleased snippets on there until Kwani drops. Even though his fans don't seem to mind, some people think it's doing more bad than good for his career, but if you ask me, I think it's good marketing that's been working for him and I'm a big believer that if it's not broke, then do not fix it. Every artist has their own way of marketing and have their own way of narrating their career to their benefit and the no drop seemed to work for Kwani. Every time he drop on YouTube, he's getting hundreds of thousands of views in short time and his snippets on Instagram is averaging the same amount of plays as his YouTube. Now in a nutshell, this means that whatever he's doing is working for him. Not to mention, he just recently signed a partnership deal with 10K Projects. Now, aside from all that, OT7 has recently been called a scammer and accused of ripping a YouTuber by the name of Raw G's for $3,500. Now, if you're like me, when you heard this, you will automatically think it was clickbait because it's OT7 Kwani, right? Not the man walking around at any given time with fifty dollars to $100,000. Not the man saying he made thirty dollars before twelve. dollars Ain't no way. However, as I listened to the story time of Raw G's, it would be made clear that I wouldn't say that OT7 Kwani actually scammed him, but he was more so just doing bad business or he just finessed him. Now, Raw G's is a streamer, and thanks to his story, this has been my first time hearing about him. However, he does have a huge following where he has almost 400,000 subscribers. And his story time is almost at 200,000 views in just less than 24 hours. Now, like I told y'all, it was a pretty long stream where he broke down what actually happened word for word and why OT7 Kwani owes him $3,500. So I'm gonna leave a link pinned in the comments so y'all could check the whole stream out if you wanna get the whole gist of things. However, if you don't wanna see the full two hours or almost two hours, I'ma just sum it up for y'all and explain what happened as far as what I took from the situation and how business was handled between Kwani and Rod G's. Now from an unbiased standpoint, coming from someone who don't know either one of these guys in real life, I feel both of them had a point where ultimately Rod actually had more of a point when it comes to unprofessionalism. Basically Kwani swindled him, however, this should be a lesson for Rod and any other future YouTubers or streamers. Whenever you're doing business with a rapper or just anybody, period, you always must have a contract involved. This is what separates the big platforms from the small platforms, or just separate people that know how to do good business from the ones that do bad business, down to the people that just don't know how to do business at all. 
If Raw G's had a contract involved, he wouldn't even be going through half of the stuff that he's going through now. It would be nothing about $3,500 because if Kwani decided not to give him his money back for services that wasn't rendered, Raw would just have to go the legal route and get the money he's owed back like that or even more. Now, instead of having to go through this and waste time and energy and asking for it back or, you know, a whole long drawn out phase, he could have got the money back and then used it to something else that could be conducive to his platform. Now, there's a part in the story time where Rod says that they both agreed that he'll pay him $3,500, but a song for his intro was included in that. But when Rod got around him, they tried to make him pay extra for that because Kwani tried to act like he never agreed to it. But guess what? If he had that contract, like I just spoke about, it would be no back and forth about what was agreed on because it will already be in black and white. And actually, Rod says he was drawing up a contract until Kwani pretty much finessed him and told him that it's no need for one because he's going to get paid, right? It's one of those ways like, yeah, trust me, you're going to get paid, bro. But once again, this separates good business from bad business. Imagine me not giving an artist a contract because he says so right no that's their job their job is to get over on you and if you don't catch it then it's simply on you and that's just in business period that's like a customer being able to tell a restaurant the price that they want their food for or how they want to pay or whatever right i don't know but anyway y'all hit the thumbs up button so we can get this video into the algorithm and if you aren't already subscribed to the platform make sure you do so now all right now raw g's will stream and tell his fans that he was scammed by ot7 kwani for thirty five hundred dollars he states that he had an intro song of ot7 kwani a part of his intro already but for some reason kwani and his team put copyright claims on all the videos that included that intro keep in mind it was quite a few videos because that was his intro so he had to switch up his intro so he could stop getting hit and actually benefit off the video now, Raw G's think it was OT7 Kwani that did it, and he says that was the first red flag, and he might have been right. But let me explain something from personal experience myself with YouTube and using copyright content when it comes to music. I can honestly say that that's not always the case when it's coming from an artist. Sometimes when an artist is independent and you use their music, it's okay because it's not subjected to any labels or anywhere else. You know, and a lot of these artists don't know how to put their music to where they can make royalties and stuff off it. So you can use it. But once they sign whatever deal they sign, their music is now associated with that label. And those labels do not play. Right? They copyright any and every video that includes their artist's sounds, music, uh, videos, whatever it is. You know, unless you mute it. Now... I'm assuming that's what happened with Raw G's because he says he was using the music for a minute and then everything came out of nowhere. Keep in mind that Kwani just signed a partnership deal with 10K Productions. So, you know. But anyway, Raw G says that was the first red flag. Then when it comes to the video he paid for, he says when he asked Kwani for a price to do a video similar to the one he did with Booba, he says Kwani first said 10K. He made it seem like everything is 10K, he don't do nothing less than ten to $15,000. But somehow, Raw got Kwani down to $3,500, and Kwani made it seem like he was doing it for the love of Raw, I guess. Right? And this would come with the intentions that Raw was going to get a sit down with Kwani to interview him in the studio scene where they'll do somewhat of a song together, and he would use that as his new intros for his videos because all of his supporters was filling the last intro until it got taken down. Now, Raw says that Kwani agreed to do it all for 3,500. He says that they were supposed to meet up a bunch of times, but Kwani kept making excuses and giving him a runaround when it was time to shoot until they finally agreed to shoot out in Cali. He says while he was there, he didn't get much done because he wasn't able to get Kwani's undivided attention and he wasn't interested in hanging around with Kwani. He pretty much just wanted content, he wanted what he paid for, and I guess hanging around Kwani and just filming him or being around him isn't what he paid for, right? So he wanted what he paid for. Now he states that he gave Kwani half and said that he wasn't going to give him the other half until everything was done. Somehow, Kwani fast-talked him into giving him the money, in which he did, but he didn't get what he paid for still. So fast forward after they were done in Cali, Kwani gave him his word that they were going to finish shooting when he got back to Philly, in which never happened. 
Rod just kept getting a runaround from Kwani's manager and him. Now, long story short, Rod grew frustrated and asked for his money back. Kwani agreed to give him the whole thing back and told him not to even drop the video, but he never gave the money back. Both of these guys would get into a back and forth via Instagram DM, and that's when Rod threatened to do a story time on it to make his money back one way or another, and that's exactly what he did. Right now that video is almost at 200,000, so it's on pace to actually make the money back. Now there's a lot of stuff I left out because that stream was almost two hours long like I told y'all, so if I included every detail, you guys might as well just went to see his video. But I summed it up so you guys can get the gist of it and what happened and why he's calling OT7 Kwani a scammer. Now what it seemed to me, um, honestly, I think Kwani pretty much finessed it um, or unprofessionalism. Maybe he did actually really want to do it, but he kept getting caught up. But instead of just telling him that, he played back and forth games. But like I said, maybe he just got finessed. You know, you could call it a scam, bamboozled, swindled, whatever fancy wording you got for it. But I would say this is more towards the finesse side of things. And I hope this was a lesson learned to him for the future, in which I'm sure it was. If you do anything business-wise, especially when it comes to an artist or anybody that you're doing business with, period. Make sure you have a contract locked in to protect you on the back end. I don't care how cool you are with them. I don't care how cool you think they are, right? Because you could end up in this same very situation. It's not about emotion. It's not about how much I like you or whatever. It's business, not personal, right? Now, Raw will actually take to his IG story to repost some people that actually claim Kwani scammed them as well in the past. One of the guys would hit up Rod and he would say, quote, now that's crazy because I'm a producer and he owed me $200 for some beats. Rod G's would caption that saying, quote, pay these people, Mr. Money, you out here doing nasty work, shaking my head, corn emoji. That's pretty much him calling him corny. Now, another person would come through and say that Kwani pretty much scammed them too. He would hit up Rod and he would say, quote, Rod, Kwani owe me $1,500 too, bro. You right, bro. He scammed me for a feature when I was 15. I'm 16 now. He on all corny ish, bro. I'm glad you're using your platform and exposing him, bro. It's not cool. He be scamming kids, bro. So like I said, y'all, in a nutshell, I just think Rod didn't realize he was being finessed. Um, and it was unprofessional on OT7 Kwani's behalf. Even if he was trying to do the right thing, maybe he was going to give the money back, but it was too drawn out. It was too long right and um he didn't wait that long to pay you so if you were supposed to pay him back you were supposed to give him that money just as fast as you got it right so you know it is what it is man this would be a lesson learned for him for sure um this is not a good look for Kwani because at the end of the day there's other people that might want to do business with him whether it's a producer or whether it's an artist but when they see things like that this is bad for your image it's bad for business and it makes people not want to do business with you in the future right so it stops your bag or whatever the case may be now i can't lie at first i was thinking like even though raw g's didn't get the type of footage he wanted maybe he could have made out and did with what he had you know and did something with that but maybe he like i don't care about all that i want it what i paid for so i understand that too man somebody's paying for something you give them what they pay for simple it's like when you go to a store if you pay for something you expect to get something in return but what you pay for right you're not going to pay for gum and then get a uh, tic tac or you know what i'm saying anyway y'all jump in the comments man let me know what y'all think about this um do y'all think your boy ot7 kwani is out here scamming people or what all right jump in the comments let me know what y'all think don't forget to like comment share and subscribe hit that bell so you're notified every time we drop new content and remember as long as you keep on watching i'm gonna keep on dropping and i'm out